Back in the days, the main way used to control pests on cash crops was just the use of chemicals. But times have changed. We are learning of new methods each day. People are aware of the problems that come with the wide-scale, irresponsible use of agrochemicals. We are also learning that most of the stubborn pests cannot be controlled by agrochemicals. Kenyan farmers are learning this the hard way. In fact, these days, when someone tells me to go and apply a new chemical, I don't pin my hopes too high. Most probably is a waste of money and time. On the other hand, customers are strongly biased. They assume that flawless, smooth and attractive products are the best quality. The customer demands perfection and I want good sales. Where can we strike the balance? Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. I don't know how you control pests in your farm to produce products attractive and safe to your customers. I learned the other day from my friends that they have a small kitchen garden and organic farming just for personal consumption. And then, at the same time, they have the main farm for commercial production where allowed synthetic chemicals can be used just for business. And so, today I want to talk about some interventions that you can use to control pests at the farm. Before I start, let me say that the success of these methods depend on timeliness. The earlier you set up, the better. Like you don't introduce these controls when you're already in trouble. There is a Swahili saying that Kinga Nibora Kuliko Tiba. Sticky traps are plastic cards with glue applied on both sides. The idea is to attract and capture common flying insects at the farm. They are mainly two colors, yellow traps and blue traps. The common pests captured by the yellow traps are the white flies, we have the drips, white flies, aphids, leaf miners, and many more. On the other hand, the blue traps will trap aphids and drips. In fact, you'll find that the blue traps will attract drips better than the yellow traps. Although sticky traps are in the form of cards, there are companies that sell you the traps as one big roll, like a tissue paper. The rolls will be more expensive and effective, of course the bigger surface area. If I wanted to control drips on low-lying crops like spring onions or chives, then I would settle for the roll type. For a farmer with a small garden, these traps can help as a form of control. But for bigger farms, the traps serve as one of the monitoring tools. By monitoring, the kind and the population of pests stuck on the traps, a farmer can predict the challenges expected and even the thresholds. Monitoring may mean counting, recording, and analyzing the insects periodically over time. That can help one develop a scouting report. You can suspend them close to the crop canopy but not in contact with the leaves. I like placing some at the greenhouse entrance and even at the corners. From experience, I have found that mature insects like moths like crowding in the corners, just being strategic. Now, of course, once the trap is full of insects or gets accidentally soiled, then you will have to replace them. Now that I have discussed about the yellow and blue traps, I have a question directed to you. Do you think it's a wise idea for you or your farm staff to use yellow or blue clothing when working in the greenhouses or in your garden?
You can also get traps that use pheromones to lure the insects. These are more precise and effective. You must have heard how horticultural products from Kenya have been facing challenges with controlling pests like codling moth in avocado and chili. In fact, some farmers have been forced to grow chili under nets. Fruit fly is also another stubborn pest, a big concern to watermelon and mango farmers. If these pests are not controlled early in time, the population can get out of hand and a farmer will surely lose the whole production. The pheromone will attract the insects and then the poison bait will surely kill it, a sure way to control the population. Each product will come with instructions on how to install the traps. As I mentioned earlier, the traps should be installed early in time before the infestation starts, like during flowering. If you wait, you lose. In my previous video, I discussed on how to control birds in sorghum farming. There are other crops like sunflower, millet, or even vegetables that can be affected. Now, I know you may think this is not a big issue, but wait until you experience it. Birds can really take you out of business. On the other hand, it's not ethical to kill them. I think it's even a sin. Birds are friends when they are eating our crop pests, but then they are enemies if they decide to eat on the produce. Anti-bird nets are not the cheapest solution I know, but after all said and done, you may find them to be quite effective. Shed nets are mainly used to reduce solar radiation, that is to provide a shade like mostly under nurseries. Well, you can use shed nets to enclose your garden. They are quite effective in controlling moths and butterflies. I hope you can tell the difference. Both have stages that are a pest to our crops. Of course, for shed nets, you will have to choose the one that will not affect the crop performance. They are sold at different shading intensity. And so, if the issue is just to control the pest, you may settle for 30% instead of a 75%. Insect nets are also used to control insects, but mostly in greenhouses. These are used mostly on walls of most greenhouses. They are made from a tougher material, longer lasting, but more expensive. Now, there are many other non-chemical pest control methods out there, but I have felt that I should mention this few that could be interesting to you as a small scale farmer. You know, the idea of the channel was not only to show you how to become an overnight millionaire, but also highlight the challenges involved in the farming business. It's not usually a smooth ride. One has to put in some work. Thank you for watching. Remember to share and subscribe. See you in my next video and God bless you.